I've been saying for quite a while now that um, if you were to buy a plug-in hybrid today, there is a good chance, depending on which model you buy, it would be obsolete very quickly. And one of the reasons, well, isn't something I anticipated, the Chinese government has just made a new law. And this will change the kind of plug-in hybrids that they send internationally, globally. There will no longer be short-range plug-in hybrids with less than 100 kilometers. Here's why. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. And plug-in hybrids in China will now have a minimum range of 100 kilometers. And the reason they have a minimum range of 100 kilometers is very, very simple. Because they'll no longer qualify for subsidies if they don't have a minimum 100 kilometer range. And they need those subsidies. Trust me, they don't want to not qualify. That'll mean that very, very quickly, nearly every plug-in hybrid in China will have a minimum of 100 kilometers of range. The CLTC, so that's probably about 85 kilometers of WLTP range. Which brings us to this point. You might be thinking, well, the Chinese will surely just keep on selling plug-in hybrids outside of China with less range than that. Here's the thing. It just doesn't make economic sense to do that. China's car market is 32 million sales per year. To give you some context, that is 32 times larger than Australia's car market. 32 times. It's more than double. Europe, only 14 million sales per year. The United North, North America, 16 million. Basically, put Europe and North America together and China sells more cars in China alone than those two locations. So China is not going to go and make a special hybrid just for John down the street in Melbourne because he wants one with 50 kilometers of range. It doesn't work that way. You've got to set up a production line. All this stuff has to actually volume. You've got to get volume. You've got to actually basically get enough numbers and sales of a certain model to justify its existence. Basically, what I'm saying here is plug-in hybrids will be obsolete with less than 100 kilometers of range. Or well, when I'm talking less than 100, I mean, you know, 50 or less, those kinds of cars. People will look at them and think of, this is what they'll think. Ah, you've got a Nissan Leaf. Ah, oh, you got one of those ones from 2015, 2018. They didn't have battery management, did they? The batteries died really quick, didn't they? Ah, okay. Mm, well, I'll, I'll buy it, but I'll give you 50, maybe I'll give you 50% less than what you paid. That's what I can see happening. I could be wrong, guys. Let me know if you agree or you disagree. But ultimately, what's going to happen is plug-in hybrids will have more range very, very quickly. Manufacturers will adapt to this very quickly. They'll get rid of their short-range models. There's many short-range models with less than 100 kilometers of ranges. In fact, hundreds. Most of those will become extinct within a few months' time just because they don't make a production line for Australia. They don't make a production line for New Zealand. They don't make it for even for Germany. They can't justify the sales figures just for one model, for one, one basically for a, an international model. So the other thing I think it's worth considering is this. This goes into effect in well, on the 1st of January 2026. So in only a few months' time, everything will change. Now, I should also point out the fact that um, companies like, well, Zika and Xpeng, their new plug-in hybrids, actually not plug-in hybrids, but their new e-revs for Xpeng and plug-in hybrids for Zika are going to have 300 kilometers or more of range, some cases 400 plus. And they're kind of changing very quickly. We're looking at 350 kilowatt charging or 500 kilowatt charging from other, from other models. So current plug-in hybrids that have between 30 to 50 kilowatt DC charging will also be seen as obsolete. It's very slow charging. And I think people are gonna look at it and say, well, I can get one with 350 kilowatt charging or one with 50 kilowatt, which one would I prefer? And I think the market will very quickly shift to the better technology. Now it's worth pointing out that this actually is more significant than people realize because at this point in time, it's very difficult to register a car in most major cities in China, unless it's a plug-in hybrid or an EV or an e-rev. And if the minimum standard is 100 kilometers to be considered either one of those vehicles, then that will also influence buyers. Buyers, of course, um, 
will pretty much have to get a vehicle with more than 100 kilometers of EV on the range in order to actually get their cars registered, to get a number plate for those cars. There's also some other changes, new standards for fuel economy. And these new standards will require these gasoline engines and these plug-in hybrids to be very, very efficient. One big benefit here is hopefully if all these new plug-in hybrids and e-revs have more range in the future, which obviously they will very soon, more, buy, more owners should be driving them as EVs alone. Because if you've got more EV only range, you're more likely to just do EV only trips most of the time and get in the habit of charging your battery in your EV, in your plug-in hybrid, which many people in Europe don't do. But if you've got more range, I think that's going to incentivize people to do that more often. Now, all of this said, guys, I personally don't advocate for plug-in hybrids or even e-revs, except in some cases. You know, if you've got to do a lot of towing, can't have access to a Chevy Silverado EV in the US, which has 450 miles of range or something like that, or you can't afford one. Uh, if you've got to do a lot of towing, then I think an e-rev in some instances does make sense today. It won't in the future when we have a lot more EV range, but I can understand why it would make sense today. That said, I'd still, if it were me and it were my money, I'd be waiting for an e-rev with 300, 400 plus kilometers of range. And then I would consider, you know, getting that vehicle for towing. I think that would be an option. But that said, EVs, the range of them is continuing to increase. And whilst there is not a lot of vehicles available that can tow um, a lot of distance, and I'm talking, you know, big caravans and big boats, which some people do have, that will change a lot over the next couple of years. Let me know your thoughts. How do you see all this playing out? Thanks for watching. The Sydney EV International Motor Show. If you want to get a 50% discount on your tickets, all you got to do, click the link in the description and use the promotion code that's in the description. Just copy and paste that. Now, I should mention there's only 200 tickets available per day. So if you go to use the promo code and you can't get a ticket, wait till the next day. Don't wait until the day before the show to get your tickets because otherwise you'll probably miss out on getting the 50% discount.